Hey guys, welcome to a new training video. This time it is upon user request, where we're going to show you the most common actions that you can use inside of your Google Sheets integration. So the first thing that I want to cover is the dynamic fetching of data into your chatbot. And it sounds really, really complicated, but it really is not. So first let's continue with that step. We are going with an action block. With this action block, we are going with an integration. And with this integration, we're going with Google Sheets. After we are going to press action, going with get multiple rows, going with a spreadsheet. So let me select the correct spreadsheet and the worksheet. And if we preview uh, the match rows right now, you will see that we get some data back, right? So this is basically sort of a menu for a restaurant that we get back. We have the type of main courses, the names, the description and the image URLs. So if we are going to map all of this, let's just say this will be Google Sheets or let's say menu items. There we go. And let's save this inside of a JSON custom field. The next step would be to go with a regular send message node. And inside this send message node, we are going with the for each step. This means that it's going to dynamically fetch all the data from that JSON field that we just saved from the Google Sheet action. And inside, we will be able to basically display all the available items inside of gallery cards. So if we are going with choose the custom field, let's go with menu and then items. And then inside, we can just go with the for each item. That's an important part. And as you can see, it will fetch the uh, Google Sheets column names. So if we're going to take a look at the col column names, we have the type, we have the name, description, and image URL, right? So what we can do is for the image, we're going to use the image URL, just point and click and then press save. For the title, we are going with the name of the product. And then let's say we are also going with the description as a subtitle. There we go. We can also choose a specific item. So if a user chooses a specific item, we can also map that specific item. So let's say we're going to have a button and say learn more. There we go. Important here is that you are going to use a select next step. The next step will be to select this first option called select. This means that the user's choice is being stored in this system field and we can access that from the select system field. If we're going to press save, then we will be able to map the outcome of what this user basically typed or selected. So if we are going to output this a really simple message, let's go with a text and then let's say you chose and then let's output the select system field. There we go. Go with the item because there it, uh, it's stored inside that select dot item. And now we can map anything that we like to. So in this case, we are going to want to map the name, right? Of, this, uh, of the chosen product. And if we want to do so, we can just copy the Google name, the Google column name. We're going back inside the uh, integration and then just copy and paste that in. Make sure there is no space in between the dot and the actual name. So let's just go with that, save, and let's see if this works. So let's preview this inside of a web. There we go. And let's see if we get all items back. And here we have it. So we have all of our items. And as you can see, if you have more than 10 items, we get a quick reply to show the next 10 items on the card. And if we do so, you can see these are all the items. So if we say next 10 items, it will then load the next set of items. And these are all the desserts and drinks. But what if you only want to map a certain section? So for example, if we want to map only the desserts or only the drinks, right? It's really easy to customize that. So if we just close this web pop-up, we can go towards the Google Sheet action again. And now we are going to submit the filter. We're going to insert a filter and we're going to check for a certain column name. 
In this case, we're going to check for the type column. That means that we're going to filter through this specific column. And then from here, so let's select type. Let's say we are just wanting to have the drinks, right? So if we say we want to have drinks, press save, press save again, publish. And now if we preview it, we should not get anything else but just the drinks from this Google Sheet. So it's going to fetch it dynamically. And as you can see here, we only have the drinks now. So we have one, two, three, and let's see, four drinks. And if we take a look inside the Google Sheet, we have one, two, three, four kinds of drinks. So before sending users towards this action, you could also have a question, right? Uh, so let's input a question. And inside this question, we can give a multiple choice. What would you like to see? From here, we're going to save it towards a certain uh, custom field and then basically go towards this Google Sheet action again. Let's first implement the type will be matching the Google Sheet or the custom field uh, that we store the answer in. So let's go with the response custom field in this case and save this. And now for the options, we can basically give all the options that we have inside this type. So we have main courses, appetizers, desserts, and drinks. So if we are going to give those, so let's say we're going to start with appetizers and let's just give the same value in the answer value. Then we are going with main course and let's see, it's just singular. So that will be main course. And the next one will be desserts, desserts, and let's save that in the answer value as well. And the last one will be, uh, let's see, that was drinks. So let's save that as such. So let's test out if we have now built a really simple flow that basically dynamically fetch certain items from a Google Sheet based on the search of the user. So let's go and preview this. So we will get the question along with the, basically the uh, options, right? So let's go and let's say appetizers. And now we should search the sheet and only return the appetizers. And as you can see, we have four, five, five appetizers. So let's see if that is correct. One, two, three, four, and five. Pretty cool, right? And if we do this again, let's go with desserts this time. So we'll get the question, let's say desserts. And from desserts, we have the funnel cakes, the cherry pie, the banana split, and that's it. So let's see if that correlates with just the three desserts. And that is exactly what we fetch from the Google Sheet itself. Really cool stuff, really easy to do. With just a few notes, as you can see here, you can dynamically fetch any kind of information from a Google Sheet, display it inside of a gallery card, dynamic gallery card, inside of your chatbot, and then also output anything that you like to. So let's actually test that last part, right? So let's preview this one more time. And let's see if we, ma if we make a choice that the correct choice has been stored inside that system field select. So let's go there. So let's just go with a drink this time. And now it will fetch all the drinks. And let's say we want to have the cocktail. You chose martini cocktail. If we are going with the hot coffee, there we have it. We have the hot coffee. And if we do the house wine, last but not least, there we have the house wine. So this way you can store any kind of selected choice by the user and follow up inside of a new flow. So this is how dynamic fetching of a multiple data points inside your Google Sheet works and how to display them along with storing the user's choice. Okay, so the next few Google Sheet actions are regarding inserting a new row inside the Google Sheet, 
updating that exact same row inside the Google Sheet, along with being able to also fetch data from a single row inside of your Google Sheet. So these are the most commonly used actions. So let's get to them right now. First of all, let's go with a new action block and a lot, let's go and insert it. From here, we're going with integrations and from integrations, Google Sheet, of course. And now we are going to insert a new row. You will see that I also made some adjustments towards this Google Sheet where you will now see that we have a name column, a user ID, an email and a phone column. So we're going to call this Google Sheet again, this worksheet to be exact. We're going to scroll down, there we go. And from here, you will see that we have a custom field section where we can set up our dynamic custom fields. And then we can basically map them towards the Google column names. As you can see, name, user ID, email, and phone. I will provide static values, but in the most common cases, of course, you will just use um, the variables inside of your available overview. So let's go with name with my full name. Then user ID, I will just fetch something like this. Then my email, let's go with, uh, yeah, let's go with this email. And then for the phone number, let's go with something like this. Let's save this. And then at the end, going to send ourselves a message, just a notification that the Google Sheet should be updated. So let's go and say send. Let's just try this integration out. We can just preview it from this action block. And let's see if we get something sent towards the Google Sheet itself. Takes a few seconds and now we should get the message sent. So if we take a look at the Google Sheets now, you will see that we have all our available information, right? So this is how easy it is to insert a new row. The next part is how can we update that exact same row, right? So let's delete this insert row action. And now we want to update this row. So we're going with integrations again, Google Sheets, from Google Sheets edit action. And now we have two options. We can either update the row with this action. So update row, update Google Sheets spreadsheets data. Or we can go with absurd row. And absurd row means that if a row cannot be found, it will automatically add a new row for you. So if we are using a certain filter to look up the specific row and it cannot be found, then the chatbot will automatically insert a new row. I myself almost always use the absurd row, just not to lose any kind of data. So let's go with the exact same spreadsheet and worksheet again. There we go. Now we're going to provide a filter. So the filter will have a condition of checking by user ID because user ID should never change. There we go. I will provide the static value, but for you, most likely you will either use the user ID here in the system field or the user NS. Those are the two values that are always consistent, right? So I will just use the static value that I just created. There we go. Then we can also see the preview match rows just to see if it works. And as you can see, it finds my data, right? And now I can choose what data I want to update. So I don't have to insert everything again because the name most likely will be the same. User ID will be the same because that's the lookup value. But we can also choose to update the email and phone. So let's disable everything except for the email, right? Let's choose a different email. There we go. Let's say save, publish, and let's preview this again. There we go. If we go here, we should see this email change live. So let's take a look. And there we go. It's now changed to my secondary email. You will also see the message sent here but you will see that this row has been matched, right? So what the absurd actually does, so let's just use a user ID and add an extra tree. 
you will see that now the user cannot be found and it will just insert another row. This way you will be ensured that the data will never be lost and you'll always have the data inside of your Google Sheet. So let's save it again and let's preview it because now you will see that an additional row will be added. But let's wait a few seconds and then we should see another row added. And as you can see here, because we only updated the email field, right? Only the email field will be, uh, will be inserted. So in that case, it might be a good thing to insert all the data points to ensure if you use Opsert and the record is not found, that you have all the contact details. The last action that we want to show you is how to fetch from a specific data point. So if we are going with a new action, there we go. Let's go with integrations Google Sheets again. Now we can go with edit action and now we can choose the second one, get row by value. I'm going to select the correct worksheet and spreadsheet again. We're going with a filter because we need to search for a specific row. Let's choose the user ID again, or we can also do email. That's totally fine, totally up to you. So, but let's do user ID and let's press save. You can also preview the match rows if you want to, and it should give you some value. Now do note that this only works with static values. So if you're using uh, a variable, right? That is not being populated during tests. Same for external requests. You always need to provide a test value. So in this case, always, if you want to test beforehand, always provide a static value. If it works, just change it towards the variable, the custom field. Now you will see that we have the opposite. Now we can map the Google column names towards specific custom fields, right? So let's just use the name. Let's see if we have a name here, name custom field, and let's display the email and phone number. Let's just go with the lead email. And then for phone, we can just go with a phone number. So let's go with lead phone to give it a little bit in sync. Now we can basically output everything. So let's say something like the following. We have found the following brackets. Now we can go for the name and we will use the name custom field. Then we will have the email, which we saved in the lead email, right? So let's go with lead email. And then for phone, we can go with the lead phone, underscore phone. There we have it. Okay, so let's take a look if this integration works as well to fetch a row from a specific value where we're going to search inside of this column and then see if we can match it with this row. So let's preview this, preview in pop-up, and then let's see what data that we get back. And here you can see we, ha we have found the following records, name, and then we have the email and we have the phone number. As you can see, if we check it on the back end, you will see that the phone number ends at 632 and the email, of course, along with the user's name. So these are the most popular actions that users use and some users requested this tutorial. So we hope that this mini workshop helped you in understanding on how to use the most popular actions of the Google Sheets integration. If you have any questions, do let us know down in the comment section below. And if you want to see more in-depth tutorials about Google Sheets, do let us know as well. And we'll try to record that kind of video for you to be able to fully utilize the Google Sheets integration. For now, enjoy, try it out, have a great day, and we'll talk to you really, really soon.